that time in Germany, there was a public debate about how to handle waste, and everybody was collecting old newspapers, old glasses, old plastic waste, put it in special containers on the streets, and then there was the news that Shell wants to dump an old oil rig into the sea, to put the waste into the nature. And this was uh, not acceptable. In April 1995, unknown to Shell, the German Greenpeace team hatched a plan to board the Brent Spa to try and stop them from dumping it. Shell were determined to go ahead with the dumping. But first, they would have to get the protesters off the platform. Onshore, the environmental movement was starting to spread. Plans to build a bypass at Newbury were provoking resistance from a new generation of protesters, with an eye for publicity. I feel that it's the only way to get a voice these days. I mean, if I wrote a letter to my MP, would I have achieved all this? Would you lot be here now? I think not. In the North Sea, Shell hired a crane barge and set off towards the Brent Spa to evict the Greenpeace protesters. The stable dive was much bigger than the Brent Spa. It looks a little bit like uh, in, a, uh, in a space movie, like Star Wars. It must have been some sight. It was like a, a whole village floating up them, and we floated up to 15 meters away. The protesters have been waiting for this for almost a month. Then suddenly they were shouting, look, now they start. George Essen and his security team were well prepared. We had bolt cutters, we had wire cutters, we had every conceivable bit of kit to get through the nets and the Heath Robinson constructions that they had. The baskets led going back empty. security guys of shells, they were extremely aggressive, they were very hectic. They were pushing us, they were shouting at us, they were shouting at me. You know, when we landed, of course they were obstructed, but then when they realized we were getting on, they would run all over the place sort of thing, to, to predetermined bolt holes. As they retreated within the structure, they set off smoke bombs. John Castle went below and closed himself in a small space deep within the spa. OK, they've come, they're going to win, but we're not just going to walk out, you know, so we'll... Without harming anyone, we're going to slow it down as much as we can. So there was a chamber down there which I found and we rigged it up and I had my little snacks and things. We searched it high and low, and the man, Jonathan Castle, couldn't find him. But he's on this. We know he's on here. Eventually, the security men tracked him down. I was pretending not to be there, obviously, and they'd worked out where I was, and he's calling through the door, saying, Hello, John. I know you're in there. <laughs> Come on out. I'd always been quiet to start with, but then I said, no, <laughs> no, I'm not coming out. You can come in. <laughs> so in we goes, and there is Mr Castle sitting with his feet up and his radio and his apple and his supplies. I don't know how long we'd be. And of course, game up. And so we marched him out and up the steps. We'd now got everybody, so that's fine. By the end of the day, Shell's security team had rounded up the protesters and got them off the Brent Spa. Greenpeace was adamant that the principle of dumping at sea should be opposed, and it was a message that struck a chord with the petrol buying public. In the summer of 1995, consumers across Europe were boycotting Shell petrol stations, particularly in Germany, where the campaign had started. In Germany, we were informing the people at the Shell gasoline stations about the problem, and at that time, the public protest was really growing, growing, growing. In some cities, the Shell station had a loss of 50% income. It was all building up, and, you know, we heard of 
Shell's colleagues and Shell's staff in Germany being boycotted at church and sh there was shots fired at filling stations and the petrol filling stations were being boycotted and petrol sales were plummeting. It was clearly a major issue. The German leader, Helmut Kohl, was putting pressure on John Major to stop Shell going ahead with the sinking of the Brent Spa. I have to say to the right honourable gentleman that I believe it is the right way to dispose of Brent Spa in deep water. The oil industry was worried. If decommissioning was going to be this difficult, they'd all be in trouble. In June 1995, barges were sent to the Brent Spa to tow it 200 miles into the Atlantic. Greenpeace did their best to stop them. But the Shell team went ahead and began the three-day journey to the dumping site. Former oil worker John Castle was following them. But things didn't turn out quite as he expected. So I'm on the bridge following it and I kept having to alter course another five degrees to stop it, which is... and after... 20 minutes and four alterations to stop it. I thought, hang on a minute, we didn't... what's happening? Then it became obvious that they were starting a big, big, big turn, and that was... wow! <laughs> so that was completely out of the blue. The barges towing Brent Spa were making a U-turn. On June 20th, 1995, just a few miles from their objective, Shell decided to back down. Greenpeace had won the campaign. And what I remember very well is that it was totally quiet on the bridge. No one was saying a word. And then I was outside and there was a rainbow over the brand spa. And you can imagine the Greenpeace symbol, the rainbow, yeah, and we were looking at the rainbow and, and some people said, uh, look, is this possible? Is this a sign? Of course, this is uh, stupid, but when you have then the rainbow over the brand spa, this happy end now, it was a little bit too much. Yeah. <laughs> it was an astonishing victory for the protesters. Shell were forced to tow the Brent Spa to a fjord in Norway. It would stay there until they could come up with a new plan. It... After seven years and 40 million pounds, the Brent Spa was finally cut up. It became part of a ferry terminal. In the long march of little people against big people, it showed the game that just occasionally the big people don't win, and that's very important. The affair had a much bigger implication for the rest of the North.